Hi there. Uh, thank you for joining this interesting uh, expert panel discussion titled Artificial Intelligence in Gastroenterology. You have definitely heard about it, read and spoken about it, and uh, likely even used it. So today is a discussion specific on, uh, on uh, this uh, uh, technology. My name is Dr. Francesca Rancari from Medtronic, and I'm delighted to moderate this panel discussion. This is the agenda uh, of uh, the discussion, so you're going to listen about an overview of the artificial intelligence and the impact that artificial intelligence has on the practice today in gastroenterology and how it will evolve in, uh, in the future. We have the honor today to have two experts that are going to share their experience on artificial intelligence, uh, Professor Mike Wallace. Um, from Mayo Clinic, Jacksonville, Florida, and Professor Cesare Hassan from Hospital Nuovo Regina Margherita, Rome, Italy. And uh, so let's get started. Welcome, Professor Hassan and Dr. Wallace. Thank you uh, both for being here today. So, could maybe Professor uh, Wallace, um, um, you know, just to, to set the level of the audience, could you both share or could you specifically share the uh, introductory discussion on uh, artificial intelligence and what is artificial intelligence, what artificial intelligence does and uh, how, how it is impacting your patients? Yes, Francesca, thank you very much. So we've all been hearing about artificial intelligence. Actually, for many decades, it's been around. But in the last four or five years, it's really changed dramatically and become a, a factor of uh, everyday life. We've seen it in our cars. Uh, we've seen it in our interactions uh, in our computer with the many different websites. And now we're beginning to see it uh, in the gastrointestinal endoscopy space. Specifically, artificial intelligence is a set of systems which tries to replicate the intelligent systems of the human brain. Um, and if we talk about specifically what we do as endoscopists, um, uh, for a good example is colon polyp detection. When we're looking at a video screen during colonoscopy, our brain must process an image of a pink or uh, uh, lumen of the colon, and it must detect uh, polypoid or flat neoplasia, and then decide is this clinically relevant, and if so, should I remove this lesion? So that's a simple, intelligent task that we can try to replicate through artificial intelligence. Um, and there are many, many other tasks. Uh, they, uh, in the area that's most applicable to endoscopy is the so-called computer vision, where you take an image, you try to detect a relevant lesion, and you try to classify that lesion as to what, what type it is. That's a very common task we do as endoscopists. There are many other applications um, throughout endoscopy, capsule endoscopy, and also throughout the field of medicine. But in endoscopy, we're really talking about detection and classification systems. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wallace. How do you feel personally about having more and more technologies, especially in the GI, adopting artificial intelligence? I think it's critical that we use technology to improve the care of patients and also improve the practice of medicine as, as physicians. Um, there is, uh, there's always potential that new technology can make our lives more complicated. So I think in this case, we really want to use this technology to improve what we do uh, without making it overly complicated. And I think the systems that we're seeing come into commercial practice right now are, are very good at doing that. They accomplish a simple task, telling you that there's a polyp on the screen. They do it in a way that's non-intrusive. For example, they put a small box or so-called bounding box around that, but they still leave the most complex decisions up to the physician. It ultimately is the physician decision whether they really believe that this is a significant polyp and then how to remove it. And do you agree, uh, Professor Hassan, in the thoughts of uh, uh, Professor Wallace? Uh, will, okay. will, will the artificial intelligence has changed your current practice? How do you see uh, it? So I agree with uh, Mike that uh, we will receive uh, uh, more and more technology 
in the next years. Uh, but what is important uh, is that we use, for instance, in radiology, they had more and more AI software, but more radiologists eventually did not use. But I agree with Mike that in endoscopy, we will be likely to use this uh, technology because in endoscopy, it is a real-time examination. You don't have uh, the second chance uh, to go back uh, on the previous frame. And this is the main difference between endoscopy and radiology. We really need uh, a real-time uh, um, assistance uh, that is artificial uh, um, intelligence. I already use um, AI in my practice uh, every day. And um, as anticipated by Mike, uh, the most uh, immediate, uh, I would say, natural uh, expansion of AI in um, colonoscopy is a polyp uh, detection. Because in this case, the machine is telling you, look, uh, there is an area where, it, where there is a suspicious uh, of lesion. But all the diagnostic process uh, is left to the physician. It is the physician to decide whether there is a polyp or not. On the other hand, I agree with Mike that more complex um, tasks, like, for instance, polyp characterization, may be more difficult to be absorbed. Because, for instance, if a cab X tell you this is an adenoma or this is an hyperplastic, I guess that here we need the physician to confirm uh, the diagnosis. I don't feel that the endoscopy community is ready for the automatization of diagnosis uh, by artificial intelligence. What is your idea about this, Mike? Yes, I, I think um, uh... Uh, I agree with you. The uh, Although the systems are reasonably accurate now for making a diagnosis, at least on the most simple classification, is this polyp a hyperplastic polyp or is it an adenomatous polyp? The complex decisions, for example, around sessile serrated lesions, and particularly is it an, an invasive lesion, an early invasive lesion, or a superficial lesion, which have implications for how we remove them, are still very complex tasks that require and they also have very significant implications for how a patient is managed. So I, I see this first step like you, this is a simple aid to the physician to first detect uh, that there's a significant or a lesion present um, and to leave the higher intelligence tasks to the humans. Yeah, you agree that the level of confidence of uh, GI endoscopies will increase or is already increasing with the utilization of uh, artificial intelligence? Yes, I think there'll be an, an effect that we have seen as we've introduced new technology. We sometimes realize that, um, that there are lesions on the screen that, that we should perhaps be seeing, but we have not. And as we are reinforcing that knowledge that there are subtle flat lesions, we, in fact, as endoscopists, get better even without the intelli artificial intelligence. So we saw this when high definition and narrowband imaging was introduced, that uh, at least in Western countries, we didn't know at that time that there were flat lesions in the colon. As people became aware of this through these imaging systems, they actually became better endoscopists, uh, even with normal uh, white light endoscopy. Uh, just the knowledge that we are missing things makes us sometimes look more carefully. And so it, it, it is, there's a learning effect that is uh, beneficial even beyond the, the detection benefit. I fully agree. I can uh, uh, tell you my experience, uh, Francesca. So um, in, my, in my practice in Italy, uh, my prevalence of serrated adenoma is very low. And I refer this uh, to the good the food uh, in Italy, to the sunny uh, atmosphere, etc. Then uh, I had uh, access, uh, without telling Mike, to a database by his center in Mayo, where there is an uh, extreme detection of the size rated uh, 
lesion. And, and, and looking at the video by Mike, uh, I realized that actually I, I was missing most of this lesion that um, Mike endoscopist uh, detected. So when all of this is incorporated in AI and AI come in my center, it is like to have all the endoscopies by Mayo in my center telling me, look, Cesare, this is a, a saturated adenoma you should uh, detect. So I guess that the learning effect may be um, extreme, if you like, even for expert endoscopy that do not have a special expertise in uh, one or other task. I think, Professor uh, Hassan, that um... Um, if patients know that you are using artificial intelligence, first of all, are you telling patients that you are applying this new technology? How do you think that it's their reaction? Let's say um, you have a negative result, so they, they truly think that it's a true negative result and they feel more comfortable about it? Um, so when um, you are facing the patient for the first time, uh, you realize that it's written on the face of the patient. Should I trust this endoscopist? Is this really good endoscopist? So anytime you tell the patient that you are assisted by a machine that is expected to compensate for the pitfall of um, uh, human activity, patients are much more uh, reassured. And for instance, the enrollment of patients in AI study is extremely simple. Patients seem to be extremely reassured by the use of artificial intelligence. They know what it is and they trust it a lot. Same thing in the US, Professor Wallace? Yes, I, I think as patients are increasingly aware that there's variability in colonoscopy quality and particularly in adenoma detection, uh, they are asking, uh, they're asking us, uh, what is our adenoma detection rate? Uh, Ten years ago, they were asking, are we using high definition endoscopes? And I think uh, they will begin to start asking, uh, are you using artificial intelligence systems? Uh, there's a very famous um, thought leader on artificial intelligence and medicine in the United States, uh, Dr. Eric Topol, and, and he discusses this issue a lot. In fact, uh, he publicly broadcasted during his uh, preparation for endoscopy, uh, asking his physician, are you using artificial intelligence to improve your colonoscopy skills? So I think patients will begin to ask for this. Um, uh, there is a broad general knowledge that, that there's room for improvement in our adenoma detection. And I think uh, as these systems become widely available, uh, the public knowledge of them will demand that we use this or similar systems to ensure that we're doing. I, I am at, uh, doing uh, high quality exams. I, I imagine artificial intelligence like having the world's expert sort of looking over my shoulder at every endoscopy. We, we would always like to have you know, Doug Rex or, or Cesare Hassan or other world experts in endoscopy looking over our shoulder. But we, we can't do that until now. Now we can have a, an artificial uh, super endoscopist watching every single case, every single minute. Um, the other things that it's very helpful for are simple human factors of things like fatigue, distraction. Uh, we are humans as well. And uh, uh, we know that human factors like fatigue sometimes affect the performance. There's data that doing colonoscopies at the very end of the day, after many cases, the performance decreases slightly. So having an objective system that does not fatigue, uh, an AI system never gets tired, uh, never has uh, blurry vision, um, these will make a uniform standard of quality uh, throughout the practice of endoscopy. Thank you. And you mentioned also, Professor Hassan, about the easy um, 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 enrollment of patients in studies, in clinical studies. Can you share a little bit more about major studies that have impacted, you know, um, the GI society with AI? Yes. At this point, um, there is uh, one. Um, uh, Western 
randomized trial uh, published on uh, AI. Mike uh, uh, collaborated uh, with us in designing the study that was done in Italy. As um, Mike anticipated, um, the uh, endpoint uh, is uh, at the normal detection rate. Because as Mike anticipated, uh, 10, 20 years ago, ADR opened a problem in colonoscopy and uh, AI is expected to close uh, this problem. And uh, so in a randomized trial, um, comparing uh, GI genius uh, by Medtronic uh, versus a standard colonoscopy, we showed uh, a over 30% increase uh, in um, ADR with um, a 0.7% incidence of a false positive uh, um, of the withdrawal time. So we measured both the true positive and the false positive uh, to take into account uh, possible uh, uh, negative um, effect. Look, uh, uh, Francesca, when uh, um, new endoscopies start to use the system, uh, they focus too much on um, false positive. But actually, this is because the true positive uh, are uh, not so frequent because the range of adenoma per colonoscopy is, prob is probably in the magnitude of one, two. But uh, actually, false positive do not affect negatively your um, way to do colonoscopy, and uh, they don't uh, give any disturbance to the endoscopist. You still think that there are clinical gaps to to fill um, in colonoscopy with AI. So what are the next clinical clinical steps here? Uh, yes, I can address that. So um, some of the, the obvious ones we, we mentioned about the diagnostic, uh, so-called computer-aided diagnosis. So uh, distinguishing the major categories of polyps, or at least assisting the physician in making that decision uh, I think is going to be a, a, an important step, uh, particularly as we struggle with um, flat lesions that are invasive cancers or superficially invasive cancers. We're still sending far too many non-invasive large polyps to surgeons. And I think a system that, that clearly identified a large lateral spreading lesion as non-invasive, indicating that it can be removed endoscopically will be very helpful. I think all of the other major neoplastic conditions of the gut are also very amenable to this technology. Uh, for example, Barrett's esophagus uh, for detection of early dysplasia in Barrett's esophagus, and as well as squamous cell lesions, and particularly in uh, Asia, the early gastric cancer. Um, capsule endoscopy also is making very rapid progress. This area is especially amenable like radiology, it's a stored image that is reviewed offline, and there are tens of thousands of images to review. Um, and this is especially uh, beneficial for AI systems because you can immediately filter those tens of thousands of images into the ones that are suspicious that can be confirmed much more rapidly by physicians. Yeah, I fully agree with uh, Mike. As an, as an endoscopist, uh, I would like as soon as possible to have AI for upper GI as well as for uh, colonoscopy because even after a negative upper GI, you are never confident that you didn't miss a high grade displays in a Barrett uh, or an early gastric cancer because they are much flatter lesions. So I fully agree with uh, Mike, this is the need uh, for the endoscopy community. Right. So well, how do you foresee the future of AI in, uh, in GI, let's say, in two, five, or ten years, like expansion of the utilization, um, uh, a bigger, let's say, a higher learning curve from the endoscopies, which is your idea about the future of this technology? So I, I think in the next five years, these systems will become uh, almost ubiquitous uh, in our endoscopes, uh, much like high definition and narrow band or similar uh, narrow uh, uh, wavelength technologies have now become essential elements in every endoscope. I, I think in five or 10 years, we will have similar technologies into every endoscope or, or systems compatible with every endoscope. Um, I think we will also see 
ancillary systems. For example, we, we've talked now about imaging, detection, and classification, but also the mundane tasks of endoscopy, generating a report, calculating your withdrawal time, determining which device did you use, a polyp, forcep, uh, a forceps, or a snare, and generating a typical endoscopy report. Uh, these can all be tasks that are assigned to AI systems. So uh, I think the whole um, area of endoscopy will see integration uh, of AI systems uh, into our, the visual component, the computer vision part, but also the ancillary things that we do to generate reports, to generate uh, billing codes, uh, mundane tasks that don't require the intelligence of a human, but can be offloaded to an artificial intelligence system. That's very nice uh, response, Mike. I I'm waiting for this. Thank you, thank you both. And uh, can you share a little bit more, really, the the, the practical benefits on uh, patient care of uh, the AI technology? What did you really see practically? Yeah, so, uh, as, uh, as uh, Professor Hassan commented, the, the, the immediate benefit is the gain in adenoma detection rate. We now have at least two randomized controlled trials showing significant increases in adenoma detection rate. A third randomized controlled trial is underway right now. Um, we all are well aware of the immediate clinical benefit of increasing ADR on the uh, reduction in, in interval colorectal cancer rates and interval, uh, interval colorectal cancer deaths. So I think this is the most important issue. We can reduce the incidence of colorectal cancer and colorectal cancer death in the world by improving our adenoma detection rate. Uh, and this, this, these systems appear uh, in the first two randomized controlled trials to be highly effective at accomplishing that goal. Yeah, I, I fully agree, especially when considered that we are entering in an era where we will do less and less colonoscopy. I mean, until uh, 15 years ago, we were doing uh, colonoscopy for low-risk adenoma every five years, uh, etc. Now we are moving uh, to one colonoscopy every 10 years, uh, or here in Europe, one colonoscopy per lifetime. So the less colonoscopy you do, the more important is that this colonoscopy is a very high standard and the standardization of colonoscopy towards very high level is uh, what uh, AI can do in any aspect of colonoscopy as Mike has anticipated from detection to the reporting to the surveillance. So less colonoscopy, better colonoscopy. This is what AI should fill in. Thank you, thank you very much. And I think it's time to wrap up, but before closing, I would like to ask you if you want to share any, any tips, any suggestions to uh, the doctors that are joining us today if they want to implement the AI technology in, in their practice. Yeah, I think we, we, realize, we have to realize now that AI is not a futuristic issue. It is here, uh, we have it today. You can utilize this in your endoscopy unit today. It's approved in Europe and through much of the world. We're hoping it will be approved in the United States shortly. Um, but this is no longer some dream on the horizon. Uh, I think the time is, is uh, now to begin to implement these systems into our practice. Yeah, I agree. Uh, as compared with the previous uh, innovation cited by Mike, like high definition, uh, or advanced imaging. This is a new type of innovation. It is interactive. So for the first time in your endoscopy room, you will have an interactive uh, innovation. And this is a completely new uh, type of experience. Uh, and I guess it's very important that everyone uh, uh, get familiarized with. Thank you, thank you very much. Is there any other questions or doubts um, uh, from, from this discussion today? Yeah, Francesca, thank you. I, I think many of the users are asking, um, you know, how will these systems integrate in my current endoscopy suite? Um, I think all of the users are, are seeing in the medical literature that each of the endoscope companies are producing their own AI systems, and these will likely be compatible with their own endoscopes. 
but there are also universal systems like the one we're discussing here um, that uh, can be uh, plugged into any endoscopic system. Uh, so I think as users think about uh, how they want to integrate this into their endoscopy lab, these are important factors to take into consideration, whether it's an endoscope-specific product or a more universal product. Uh, yes, Mike, this is a very important point. Uh, let me add one more point, if you agree. So when we have multiple systems, I guess that user expect uh, some form of benchmarking. Is one system uh, somewhat available for my uh, clinical practice? So this could be a role for scientific uh, society to provide some way of benchmarking the uh, different system before incorporating in our clinical practice. What, what do you think about it? Yeah, I completely agree. In fact, I am currently serving on the ASGE's AI task force, and this is really one of our top priorities to develop a system. For example, a common library of colonoscopy videos that could be used to benchmark any system. Uh, so I, I fully agree with you. And I think the federal regulators that are overseeing these systems are also looking for such benchmarking, much like uh, the ASGE did in the PIVI process where we can benchmark uh, Im imaging systems and other endoscopy systems. We need a universal way of benchmarking this. And I know that the ESGE and other international groups are making similar efforts. I fully agree. Thank you for this uh, incredible discussion. I, I truly think that the audience has benefited from uh, uh, your talk. And uh, I thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Grazie mille. Grazie. Ciao.